I always loved dogs, I always loved animals. We had a house up in Redwood City and we had big plate glass windows and birds would hit the window or an owl or I always had something I was trying to nurse back to health. And then I moved to Santa Barbara, we had our first German Shepherd there and I became a German Shepherd lover. You are so precious, you are. I just felt this, something that I needed to do, something that I needed to give back. And I remember taking the kids to Jack in the Box once and there was a, an article in a newspaper up showing a lab being euthanized. And I thought, you know what, it's time for me to do something and not just feel about it, I need to do something. We started with three, four dogs, a couple of volunteers, and it just grew and grew. We've probably been 10 different places in LA. And um, the last one before we moved into our new place was actually in the Garment District under the 10 Freeway. Now we have a beautiful facility for the dogs and that's made life so much easier for the volunteers and the dogs, so it's, it's been amazing. Most everything these days comes through the internet. So we get a picture of a dog or a volunteer gets a call from somebody, a private owner, maybe a neighbor who knows about someone who's losing their dog. Then we have to evaluate whether this looks like it's going to be a dog that we can place or not. What's his name? Maxwell. Another Max. No. Another Max. Maxwell? Yeah. He's already adopted. He'll fly next week to Virginia. And the people are amazing. They've had like three generations of West Side German Shepherd rescue dogs. Um, the puppy's going out of state, so he'll need, he probably needs to have x-rays because he, he throws up in the morning just a little bit. And then a lot of them we work with, like, you know, if they have medical issues, we're taking care of that. If it's just something minor, um, you know, we have a behaviorist that can work with them. Leave it, leave it. Okay. We just have a whole assortment of different medical issues when they come in. Our vet bills were running between twenty to 28000 a month, so having our own vet has been very nice. We have a kitty room where we have two cats that are very comfortable with dogs, and we take them in there to make sure that they're not going to eat the cat. Oliver and Gussie, they were raised as little kittens with shepherds. A lot of dogs, we open the door a few inches, and they've already failed it. All right, Chief, let's see how intimidating you are with cats. Oh, wow. I've worked with Robin for about 10 years. Um, I was probably one of the original volunteers. So she and I have been through quite a bit together. I enjoy nursing the sick ones back to health, and I've, I've had, you know, great, sick, crazy successes, you know. We've had a lot of happy stories, and we've shed a lot of tears together, too. I rescued Beelin about a month ago, a month and a half ago from the Downey shelter. She had a little pink on her nose, and then it just escalated, and it was, turned out it was this very esoteric, strange autoimmune disease called Steven Johnson's disease, and it's usually a disease in people. She rallied for a little bit, but I mean, she was on IVs for like a month, and um, just slowly, she just started losing her will. So I took her home. So we had a couple weeks here, and I'd take her off her IV, and she'd go lay in the sun in the, the patio here on her bed. And so she loved that. I mean, she had such a little spirit. So yeah, those are hard. I mean, I've had so many of those. But again, we've had a lot of successes. She did what nobody else, I think, would have done. And that little dog had a had a good life, and she enjoyed being with Robin. All you can say is that you did everything you could as if she'd had an owner who loved her and that she never ended up in the shelter. Robin is amazing. I, I've never met anybody like her who 
just lives and breathes for these dogs. My husband gets, the, you know, he finds it very depressing, which it is depressing, but again, on the other side, if you can help them, if you can save them, and we've saved so many. He came through the shelter, he was, they picked him up like this with these big, heavy chains, like you would, drag, you know, tow a car with. And when the chains were taken off, it took off the skin on his neck. And um, here he is here. This one had been, was pregnant, hit by a car, paralyzed. The owner was just taking her to the South LA shelter to dump her. We got her, she had her babies. Um, she was gonna have surgery, but just as they were about to do the surgery, they realized that her spine was healing on its own. So there she is later, she's totally functional. Well, this dog has a, a, a mange, a demodectic mange. Here she is here. This guy, here he was here, here he is now. Oh, just all this extreme neglect. Some rescues in other parts of the country have minimal amounts of dogs, and you can work with them to any extent you needed to, but because we have this huge volume of dogs, it's gonna be put down unless we take them. So we try to take the easier to place ones so that we can help more dogs. I used to be in the shelter a lot, um, picking the dogs, but I, it's, it's the hardest part. And so fortunately we have other volunteers do it. We're going to evaluate a German Shepherd mix. His name is George, and he was found as a stray. And we'll see what George is like. He seems like he's trained, and he's very gentle and very happy. And as long as we have room in our shelter, we'll take him. Today's a good day, better than before. We're having a very busy day. I think we've already had about six dogs adopted today, and that's just one day this week. Um, and the day is not over, so hopefully we'll get a few more fitted in. arrived from Arizona today and after driving a long way to come and get her so that she could join our family. <laughs> She's tired. She's ready to go. We're ready to go. When we do applications, we have to make sure that the people understand they can't be gone 10 hours a day, leave the dog in the backyard. Um, the dog has to be part of the family. It has to sleep inside the house because they need that connection. We try to match the right dog with them and their environment and their situation. If everything works out right, we start the contract at that point. We're going to do the secondary, and then you're the primary, and you fill out this information, and then you can mail it in, or you can let us take care of that. The process was easy, and being able to take them all for walks and um, have a little time to play with them really helped. So we eventually narrowed it down to the perfect dog. We never give up on anybody. I mean, we just, we keep them till we find them a home and that's what we do. Because we love them so much, that's what keeps us going. And everyone's very special. Even though it is a lot of heartbreak and a lot of hard work, it feeds your soul.